Yes, it's Saturday. Hope you're having a good one. As always, thank you for listening to Headbangers and Hooligans. It's George Truly Scum Malicious, and it's another scum report. One of these days, maybe I come up with a hire a guy that can say that for me, record his voice. It's the scum report. And fuck, yeah, I'll just do it myself. How about that? Uh, just wanted to do a quick little show for your Saturday, get your Saturday headed in the right direction. I know it's crazy time of year, everybody's shopping, buying all that shit for their brat fucking kids that already got everything under the sun. That's a few select people that get to do that. We all don't get every get to buy everything we want and have everything we want, but... Uh, nevertheless, hope you're getting through it. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I'm just going to get right after it. The Irishman. And I'm not, this is, it's kind of a weird review, all right? Uh, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci on Netflix. Here now, awesome it is. Uh. And I was excited to see it because it's the last time we'll probably see these three actors together. Um, Robert De Niro, not going to lie, kind of annoys me anymore. Just not because of what his opinions are on politics. He has every right to feel however he has. I just don't have to hear it every other fucking day. But that's neither here, here nor there. It doesn't take away from his acting. Okay, not in this movie. And of course the Irishman based on the book by Jimmy Sheeran, the guy that he plays in the movie, this Irish hitman, which is funny. He's Irish in the movie. Joe Pesci, uh, Al Pacino plays Jimmy Hoffa. Joe Pesci, he's the only one that plays in Italian. It's funny. But uh, anyway, so this movie goes by the book. So if you believe everything that Jimmy uh, Sheeran says and wrote down in this book, then then this movie is a an exact second for second uh, true story. But you can get on YouTube, look online, and yeah, a lot of people dispute this story. But it really, it, for me, it wasn't about that because, listen, Hollywood, they're going to exaggerate every movie. They have to. Here's the problem, okay? Here's the problem. This movie feels like three hours and 30 minutes long i am not fucking kidding uh it's good it's a good movie and i get it it's a um uh a long story uh, and jimmy hoffa uh i'm sure i'm sure some of the stuff about jimmy hoffa is true and i know with him being connected to the mob is true uh but it's just there is needless shit in this movie that they don't need uh, it's just like a lot of scenes in the godfather i'm talking about the godfather here in des moines on the south side so sorry he was like a lot of a lot of scenes with with them talking and i get it you got to set up certain scenes but they're just so many scenes with Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci that I don't, I, I don't think are necessary. And I know some reviewers, when they were reviewing this, like, that's a, what's amazing, these actors and these scenes, that they're not afraid to, to let dialogue happen and sit there for five minutes. But to me, it, a lot of it is needless. They could have cut a good hour out of this movie, all right? Uh... Especially to me, the, uh, and I'll try not to spoil too much of it, um, like the last 20 minutes, to me, is just, uh, and I, I don't think it's really a spoiler, but it's basically Robert De Niro by himself, uh, he's, because it starts with him, the whole movie starts with, uh, the whole movie, the movie starts with him being interviewed, and he's, Obviously, you know he's in a uh, home for for uh, older people, and he's telling the story. And so you know, they, by the end, you know he's by himself anyway. And it's kind of a depressing, like 
15 to 20 minutes of him just being alone and you know that he's going to die. Uh, uh, but, but it was good. I, I don't see this as a fucking Oscar movie. That's just me. I, uh, and you know how it comes to me in award shows and all that shit, but Goodfellas, it was way better than this movie. In my opinion, it's not a bad movie. It's a good movie. Uh, and there's funny shit in it. There, there's a lot of funny shit in it. Uh, I love, I love the part where, uh, Robert De Niro's telling Al Pacino, Jimmy Hoffa, hey, some guys, some of the big top guys are like, hey, they don't like what you're saying. And he's like, which top guy? And it's like, Tony. And Al Pacino's like, oh, Tony, well, that really narrows it down. They only have two names, you know, for you people, which is kind of, what, not kind of very racist, talking about Italian people, you know, Vinny, Tony, Sammy. But there is, there's some good comedy in there, but it it is too long. I think it's way too long. The, uh, Martin Scorsese is a great director, but he could have cut out an hour of this movie. But to call this one of the year's best film, I maybe it is. I I'm sorry, it's a good movie, but it ain't great. I'm giving it a seven, and that's that's the Godfather. The so so you Godfather gave it a seven. I agree with him. It's a seven, uh, but it's still worth checking it out. Three legendary actors in the same film together. Uh, Still worth that. Uh, but you know, on that, and I, and I was looking on the internet at like, like overrated movies that have, over the years, that people love, that a lot of people love, and then you watch them, and you're like, okay, I'm not getting it. Uh, one of these lists actually had Goodfellas number one. Who the... Fuck came up with that list. That guy needs smacked in the fucking face. Even if you don't like mafia movies or you're sick of them. Come on. That's a great fucking movie. How much of it is completely true? I don't know. You can look that up too. But that's a great movie. Ray Liotta is fucking amazing in that. Joe Pesci. Come on. Goodfellas. Overrated number one. But like. I came up with like a little list. Uh, there's a shitload. It was just. A few that I could think off the top of my head that I went because I heard so much about, and I go and I see them, and I'm like, okay, I'm not getting it. First one, The Dark Knight. Batman with Heath Ledger. I did not get that. It's not a bad movie. When I say overrated, I'm not saying these movies are total shit. I'm saying, what am I missing here? Okay. The Dark Knight, it was okay. It was it was decent. I didn't think Heath Ledger was this fucking so amazing as everyone says. I'm not ripping on the guy. I'm not. I'm not ripping on a dead guy. I thought he was a good actor. I just didn't see what everybody else saw. That's why I get worried when, it, oh, you gotta go see this movie. It, you know, and then you go see it and you're like, what the fuck? What was you watching? Maybe not what the fuck was you watching. Like, okay, I mean, it was all right. <laughs> but yeah, The Dark Knight. Another one, Traffic. And I've watched that two or three times. Because when it came... Oh, Traffic is great. It's kind of Hollywood fucking garbage to me. Uh, you know, how they they kind of connect the stories about... You know, Matt Dillon. Which I like Matt Dillon, don't get me wrong. And he's a racist piece of shit. And then he saves the black woman. And then, uh, what's the one one guy, Terrence? I forget his name. I think he's in Empire, or one of them shows. He's a good actor. He's been in a ton, ton of movies. Yeah, yeah. He deals with racism. It's just like the way they tie all the story together. I, I don't know. I just, it, it came off as kind of cheesy to me. Not ripping on the actors and not ripping on the subject material. It just came off as cheesy. It really did to me. And I, I've still... Like I said, I've watched it two or three times, and I still don't get that movie. Why, why it's held in such high regard to some people, not everyone. Uh, the Truman Show, Jim Carrey. I couldn't fucking stand that movie. I'm sorry. People are like, Arr. and I. Th Jim Carrey is one of those actors that, honestly, I. The, he's got two or three, two or three movies that I really uh, love, like Me, Myself, and I. 
Irene. I think that's a hilarious movie. But he's got some, like, I can't stand this fuck. I hated the cable guy. Remember that one? That was not funny at all. That fucking movie got weird real quick with Matthew Roderick. I didn't care for that, but yeah, The Truman Show, never understood it. I didn't like the one where he played Andy Kaufman either. I just didn't care for that. Uh, and Field of Dreams. Sorry, Mom. Rest in peace. I love you. She loved this movie because she loved Kevin Cosner. I'm not saying it's a horrible movie. I just don't get it. I don't understand the fascinating... Okay, build it and they will come. Right? Builds a baseball field in the middle of a cornfield and here comes Ray Liotta who's... What is it? Shoeless Joe Jackson or whatever. And maybe if you're an extremely uh, big-time baseball lover, you love this movie. I just didn't get... And trust me, I lived by that field of dreams where it was filmed for a couple years up there in Dyersville. Actually, I lived in New Vienna, which was, I don't know, about five minutes away from Dyersville. And people come visit it, and, and I I don't know. I I just never understood why it was such considered such a great movie. I just, I, I don't. But hey, it's all... It's all perception, personal taste. You know, there's movies that I watch. I'm sure I talked about The Road War the other day. People are probably, fucking Road War, it's stupid. It's like they just drive down a highway the whole movie, fucking trying to steal somebody's gas. Uh, but, that's, hey. But you know what? Maybe I'm the idiot because all these movies are fucking killing it, right? They're making shit loads of money. So the movies that I think are overrated. What the fuck do I know? But at any rate, and an, an, another thing I wanted to talk about before we leave Hollywood. Yeah, we're knee deep in Hollywood right now. A place that scares me sometimes. Uh, the whole Mandalorian thing. The Star Wars show that's on Disney. Some of it looks cool. I've been seeing the reviews on the episodes. Uh, and they're saying, man, this is better than the movies. Which... If you're talking about the prequels, that's not too hard. Just being honest here. Uh, like I said, I saw The Force Awakens. It wasn't bad. It was a lot like the very first original Star Wars back in 77, the storyline to me. Uh, I didn't see the second one. And honestly, I'm not real excited about the third one. When it comes to Star Wars, I'm just kind of meh now. They've made so much shit. From these movies now, I'm just, I really lost interest. I hate saying it. When I was a little kid, I loved Star Wars. The Empire Strikes Back. I still like The Empire Strikes Back, by the way. But this Star Wars thing, it's just, it's ran its course for me. Uh, but if you enjoy it, that's fine. Uh, I guess my only thing, are they going to keep doing this now? Now they're telling me they're going to make an Obi-Wan Kenobi origin movie i'm like just fucking stop if you're gonna do that i want a chewbacca orange origin story okay you did the han solo one you did the one that the movie that happened before the first star wars which was happened after the prequels that came out after i don't know at some point i just think you just let shit go we don't need to know every single little detail of how something gets to a certain point. We, we just don't. That's just my opinion. But hey, if you're enjoying it, good for you. Good for you. How uh, about a little bit of music? And I say a little bit because there's not a lot to talk about. And I'm not saying that because, oh, here we go. It's just because, to, for me, there hasn't been a, a ton of stuff that's come out that's, you know, oh, I got it. Listen to that. Got to review it. This is strictly for the headbangers. No hooligan shit. I said hooligan shit there. Uh, this week, Cattle Decapitation, Death Atlas, new album came out. I, I mentioned it uh, a week or two ago. These death metal bands, it to me, and I can't sing like this dude. I can't do all that little scream. You know, he sounds like a fucking possessed fucking monster half the time. Cookie Monster slash Exorcist. 
It's what he really sounds like when he's saying, I can't, I, I couldn't do the shit, but I'm just not into it. And I know a lot of people are, they're, they're big on cattle decapitation on how we've destroyed the planet, which are right. But it's like, now it gets to a point where it feels monotonous to me. Don't know this man. I haven't listened to him, to him a ton. I like some of their guitars. I've mentioned that before. The drums are ridiculous. I think these death metal drums are absolutely insane. Not ripping on the guys that play drums. I can't play drums like them. They destroy me when it comes to playing drums. I just don't get... It just doesn't sound like a human's playing these drums. That bothers me. You go you go live, it's like, is this dude playing this shit live? Uh, and... Bands do small things all the time live. I, I know this. Little industry secrets that I've read about. I get it. But I want somebody that's actually playing the drums to the song. I'm not saying they're not. It just... When that kick drum never stops. Going 16,000 fucking miles an hour. You're telling me that guy's playing that the whole song? I find that hard to believe. Uh... Not saying this band ain't talented. Remember, I'm not saying that. Uh, I, I like some of the guitars, but uh, I don't know. After a while, it just feels like you're, you know you're beating a dead horse with the same topic. I get it. We are assholes and destroyed the planet and the ocean and all that shit. I, I get it, and there's nothing wrong with that. And they're big vegetarians too. Nothing wrong with that. But they really. Uh, and they've been around a while now. I want to say since like 1996 or so. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But uh, uh, 1996 doesn't sound right. I don't know. Anyway, they, this is their eighth full length album. So they've been doing this shit a while. All right. Um, they're fucking doing shit I'm not. They're out there touring, selling music. Uh, uh, definitely one of the biggest death metal bands on the planet. I'm just kind of burnt out on the death metal thing. That's just me. If that's your thing, though, go for it. I'm sure there's bands I listen to that you can't stand either. Free country. Uh, then I seen on Banger, a channel I, I like to watch a lot, they reviewed the Rotting Christ album. That's the name of the band. They're from Greece, I guess. Another one. I just... And it's not even as... Uh, growly or screechy as cattle decapitation but i'm just i'm i i just want to be able and you can actually i i will say this you can actually understand some of the stuff that the the singer's saying for rotting christ but when it comes to every music heavier music and i like heavier music some of it uh, Gore's probably the heaviest that I listen to. I know what everybody's saying. Oh, you pussy. What the fuck are you talking about then? But for a lot of people that don't know Beyond Hell, you want to... That fucking album is heavy as shit. All right? And odorous. The way they record his voice, I... I definitely talked about that quite a bit. Just amazing. And um, their drummer... Brad Roberts, a.k.a. Jismac Degesha, that fucking dude, that's a drummer. Uh, um, but once again, not taking anything away from these bands, but it's just not my thing. And I talked to my friend the other day, and he was, I was just, we were talking about these, these bands, and he's like, well, I think it's just a fad going away no nah, it's not it's been around here for a long time now it ain't going anywhere uh, you know they now you can debate this like hey punk's not dead it's still around well it's not the same version of punk that came out in the 70s a lot of these bands strung out is not a punk band they're more than just a punk band do they have elements of it yeah but they're way way more uh advanced than just punk music so even if i don't like it i'm not a fan of it it ain't going anywhere and that's music news remember uh mtv with, with kurt kurt loader 
Hi, I'm Kurt Loder, and this is the MTV News Break. Anyway, just a, just a few stories here. Just a few new, news stories, and we'll be done. And then you can get on with your Saturday and start getting fucking smashed, huh? Got to start with Twitter. The cesspool, the one I'm always talking about, right? It's a cesspool, but it's a fucking entertaining cesspool. Well, not for this. Uh, Chief of Staff, is it Mick Mulvaney? I think. Uh, He wore this shirt. Was it kind of an atrocious looking shirt? Yeah, it was a shirt with the flag and... And of course he got tagged for it. You need to be wearing a fucking suit. What? First, there's two things here. First off, you motherfuckers, because you don't wear it, that's fine. Don't fucking worry about it. If you don't like a shirt, then don't put the motherfucker on. I, I These fashion fucking police on Twitter. What the fuck are you wearing? What, cut off fucking flannel? With sweatpants and fucking hiking boots. I mean, so what? Yeah, you know, it's just like all the, even Obama got attacked that one time because he wore a tan suit. Who gives a fuck? The President of the United States can wear whatever the fuck he wants. And the other thing, I am so fucking sick of people getting attacked because they're patriotic. Seriously. Uh, I don't drive a car with the flag on it. I know some people do. I just don't. I'm not going to attack them for it. Oh, you're fucking stupid. I get it. There's people that are never going to be happy with things in the country. There's a lot of things in this country that piss me off, too. Not going to get into that. But there's nothing wrong with somebody being proud of this country. You know, and I get it. I know... Oh, he's wearing the flag because he's, uh, I don't know what, is he conservative, fuck, liberal, I don't know, because I don't give a fuck. I'm just tired of fashion police, and then I'm tired of, pe- can I call him the patriotic police? Oh my god, he's got a flag in his yard, kill that motherfucker. Uh, but, that's just my opinion, you know, but... Nevertheless, I'll still be getting on Twitter because, like I said, I can't stop. Uh, then, this next one, this, people are going to disagree with this. Uh, about the Starbucks employee who got fired, and I don't remember where this was. She, uh, officer ordered a drink, whatever he, he got, and she wrote pig on his label when she gave the cup back to him. First off, she deserves to get fired. I make I make jokes, but listen, you want that fucking job? Do you want to be a fucking cop? I guarantee you. And listen, there are plenty of cops that are fucking assholes. I I've seen it on YouTube. Piece of shit cops, racist cops, asshole cops. Got picked on in school, and now they're a cop, and they're fucking they're the man. Well, you were going fifty nine and a fifty five, motherfucker, and you're gonna pay. That's probably being a little extreme, but uh, you want their job? And trust me, there, there's all kinds of cops. There's there's African American cops, there's Asian cops, there's Latino cops that deal with bullshit every fucking day that you don't that you wouldn't want to fuck with. All right, and I know they're not real popular right now, but just be thankful we have them, or they, they do what they do. You wouldn't want it. You wouldn't want to get called to the same house every fucking week because this boyfriend and girlfriend fight constantly because she hasn't slept in four days, snorting lines of fucking meth, and he, he doesn't get enough meth, so he beats on her, and then she calls the cop. I so. You want to follow a restraining order? Yeah, and then they get back together. Or constantly being, have someone filming you. And now they've got cameras themselves. Uh, someone constantly filming filming you to make sure you're using 
you're using the right amount of force, which is fine. I There's so many... I say so many. There is a percentage of cops that have fucked it for the ones that are actually trying to do their job. I'll put it that way. Trust me, because I've ran into cops I can't fucking stand. Pieces of shit. But I've also ran into some cool ones. And... Uh, and I understand why there's there's a percentage of people that get nervous. I, I get it. Like okay, uh, it's co- they they do they they make you nervous because you're like okay I've done something wrong I probably haven't but fuck there's a cop. Your whole mind starts racing. Okay, what did I do? yeah? But they're not all fucking bad, and fuck that employee. Okay, did. Now, if it was, I could see like uh, this was a cop that personally done something to you, but just because it, I think we've all had a bad experience with a cop in our life, maybe I I have, but I've also had some decent experiences with cops that were cool to me, that didn't have to be, and they were. So, um, just something to think about. Uh, that's just my take on it. Um, I know a lot, there's people that say, fuck all cops, they're all pieces of shit. Eh, they're not. Uh, so there's that. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this scum report. These fucking priests, I was reading this story, this, uh, Michael Bransfield, West Virginia, sexual abuse claim. I am sick of the fucking Catholic Church. And I'm sorry if you're Catholic. I I am. It's fucking stupid that these guys go around and rape fucking boys. And they just put them in another church. And they keep getting away with it. And they get to use the church as a shield. Oh, we'll investigate it. And then nothing ever fucking happens. I'm sick of that shit. Money grubbing fucking whores. Raping little fucking kids. That's all it is. I'm fucking sick of it. All right. And I'm not saying all Catholic people are bad. I don't take that the way. And I know you're saying, well, you're fucking attacking our religion. I am. I am t- attacking your religion, but I'm not attacking you personally. I went to school with some Catholics, cool people. But a lot of them did a lot of crazy shit during the week. Lots of crazy shit. Okay. More than me. Drink a shitload of beer, fucking, you know, bang a chick, probably not call her again, fucking pop some pills, and then on Sunday, what? They are forgiven. So you can fucking go go all week and do whatever the fuck you want, but you come in on Sunday and ask for forgiveness, and he'll forgive you. I'm being really kind of a prick on this. I get it. I'm just tired of these fucking priests. All of them. Let them fuck. I, I, that's what I'm saying. Let let them marry. Is that part of the problem? I don't know if that's part of the problem either. Because it, it seems like it's always little boys. It's fucking disgusting. Fucking pedophiles. Using the Bible. To fuck little boys. It's that simple. Let's get this shit fucking taken care of. Fuck the church. Quit hiding behind the church and getting away with shit. Let's get these motherfuckers prosecuted, thrown in prison, and let them get fucked up in prison. Because that's what they deserve. And that's my final take on that, alright? Whew. Sorry, that, that, that one always gets me a little worked up. Anyway, I want you to enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll be back on Monday with another entertaining show for all you people. People? Alright. Take it easy, and if it's easy, take it twice, I'm out.